Race fans, this is Larry Supermouth Huffman, AMA Hall of Fame announcer, and this isn't Supercross, it's Wednesday, Wednesday, Wednesday! And you're watching Bay Fishing with Roman and Brian. Stand by while the boys teach secrets of Bay Bass Fishing with Roman on his six-second nitro-burning pedal drive kayak, and Brian in his Cool Bay high-speed dragster boat that he takes out every, every Sunday, 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 Sunday! Be there! Woo! What up, everybody? Welcome to Bay Fishing with Roman and Brian. And speaking of Brian, let's get him in here. Brian, you ready? Let's Always. go. Hey, Brian. Hey, Roman. How you doing? How are you? Pretty good. I'm great. It's been a long, long time no see. Yeah, I guess it's been a week, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, oh, man. A lot has changed in a week, it seems like. Oh, the weather is getting good. Right. You're going to be getting out there fishing this weekend, I hope. So I'm going to oh, see yeah. you out in the water. Yeah, I will. It's going to be fun. I'm excited. Yeah. I, dude, I'm super excited about this weekend. Back to Mission Lake, finally. <laughs> <laughs> so how was your Easter, Roman? Uh, uh, Pretty good. We we went to the beach. Shore fish. Oh, nice. Shore fish a little bit. But skunked. I couldn't get out. I couldn't walk around as much as I would have. I just kind of walked around this little area. Nice. What beach do you go to? Uh, Kellogg. Oh yeah, I love that one. The one in La Jolla. I oh, know in uh, in um, uh, San Diego Bay. Oh, you oh, went, went to like... Bat Beach. I thought you meant like the beach, like surf beach. Oh no, 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 Kellogg Beach. I guess it's called Kellogg. Is it called Kellogg? Yeah, I think there's a Kellogg Beach in La Jolla. Yeah, there is. There is. There's like that. Yeah, where all the scuba divers launch from. Yeah. Cool. I see Andrew in the house. What up, Andrew? I see Eric. What up? Eric, Eric the Judge Lehman, welcome back to the show. Leonard in the house, what up? Leonard and I got a dub yesterday, guys. Woo, the dub. Uh, <laughs> Is that a video game thing? We got we got a win. Out of, oh, cool. Uh, out of 150 players, Leonard and I came out on top. Wow. It doesn't go to 1v1? Not, okay. Like you don't have to eventually turn on Leonard? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Only one walks out? Yeah, what to walk in? 150, <laughs> 150 walk in to walk out. Uh, oh, and then, so wait, hold on a second before you go any further. Can you just? I, I have not played that game. Can you just hide like in a corner till like there's only like ten people left and then run out? Yeah, you can. But uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, there's also it's a big map, right? There's also a, a circle of gas is closing in, and nobody can survive in the gas. So every like minute or so, the gas closes. So the circle oh, gets getting gotcha. smaller and smaller. So it forces everybody out of hiding. And then you eventually have to face each other. So we made it to final circle. And then and oh, then the, and then three days before that, two days before that, I had I had a, a duels win with Salty. So woo, we're improving nice. the game for sure. If you don't know what I'm talking about, don't worry about it. It's called Warzone. I play it on Tuesdays and play it after hours uh, on on Twitch. There's a Twitch. Romacaster.com forward slash Twitch. <laughs> Back to the show. All right, let's go. I said to share that because I saw Leonard. Uh, and then Sound in the City is here. What up, Sound, Sound in the City? Uh, I see Ren. What up, Ren? Welcome. Brews and beef jerky. Nice. Uh, I see Alex Norton in the house. What up? Mitt. What? Bit, you mean? Bit? Salty Dangler. Woo, dubs. Muto in the house. What up? I see. Uh, what else? What else? What else? What else? Brian likes to fish. What? Doug yeah. Rubin. El Sueño in the house. What up, Chad? Welcome back. Hey, Roy. Welcome back. MMFC. Uh, I see Dario. Dario, shout out, dude. Thanks for signing up for the Patreon support, dude. It means a lot. I appreciate you, sir. Thank you so much. Oh, hold on. Yeah, here we go. We're keep going. Uh, All Night Hider is here. Welcome back, Hider. Tarnell, welcome back. Welcome to the show. Actually, it's I don't, I don't recognize you, so welcome to the show. Is this your first time here? What's up, Tarnell? Welcome. If you're, if it's your first time here, type in all caps, first timer, and everybody will welcome you to the show. Say what's up. Ralph Aguirre, what up, Ralph? Bit, bit, yahoo! All right. So uh, we're going to start the show off, guys. First, we're going to do Pop Top, and then uh, Brian's going to go over the um, agenda for today. It's a good one. That's right. That's right. It's going to be a good one. I hope. I hope. It sounds good to me. It sounds good. All right. I'm so, ready for this. It's hot. On a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the best pop top you ever heard, 1 being the worst, rate this pop top. Sparkling Rotter, LaCroix, as always. I don't know. I must have 100 of these, so here we go. Mm. 
Nice, nice. Yeah, I didn't feel like my best, but I'll take it. Very cool. Very good. I like it. Very cool. That was good. Okay, let's see what the what the ratings are. All right, a seven from Captain Dan, a ten from Tarnell. Oh, nice, dude. Tarnell's Tarnell, a generous right judge. Thank you. Very good. That's a pretty good nine. Work on it, Ralph. I see, I see uh, HDX Pulsar in the house. What up, boss? Goo! Um, Doug had a question. How do we donate to the show? What do you need? Uh, as far as like supporting the show, you could go to uh, our, my Patreon campaign. So let's see, let's see if it's on here. Or Patreon. What's up, Hyder? What's up, Chad? So I have to give you a six. Man. I know we did. I saw it. Real Dreamer eight. Chad. That just, motiv that just motivates me to do better. <laughs> Hyder gave, gave you a 42,320. Nice. Nice. <laughs> Jinx. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'm going I'm to make a link for you guys real quick in the chat. I thought I had it in my, in my night bot. Maybe my night bot is broken. There we go. There's a link there. It says uh, romancaster.com forward slash bit. That's how you would support the stream. Oh, that's not it. Dang it. Hang on. Got to remove the back. There we go. That one. The second one, I think. Yes, that's the one. That's the one. Very cool. That's the one, Doug. The second the second link I just posted. Uh, okay, cool. All right, so now it's my turn. Scale 1 to 10. 10 being the best pop top you ever heard. 1 being the worst. Rate this pop top. Dude, wow. I'm gonna give you a high score on that one. Wow, that, that was, was a good one. That was vicious, that was dude. Solid, dude. Man, uh, that was good. I, I I opted for the quick pop instead of the slow. Ch -ch -ch. I went for the. Ch -ch. Yeah, that definitely crushed mine, dude. Crap, that was a killer one. Cheers, Roman. Cheers, everybody. Cheers, everybody. I also like to report that I am officially in ketosis. Oh my gosh. Last night, I ch last night I checked myself with a test strip, and it was like bright purple so definitely in ketosis so i'm ready for my vaccine tomorrow <laughs> gonna crush it nice and uh i'll let you, know, I'll let you guys know how, how, how it feels or i've been into fitness lately too roman oh nice i've been uh trying to fitness this taco in my mouth <laughs> <laughs> nice yeah that's that's, that's, uh, that's uh, you got the audience laughing on that one. That's very nice. Very Thank nice. you. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> what up, Zach? Welcome to the show. You just missed my probably my best pop top ever, Zach. It was, dude. I'm gonna say boosting. that was a killer one. Hey, do you boosting. notice something in my background, Roman? I do. I do. I, it's a it's an excellent quote by one of our. Uh, uh, valued MMFC uh, legends, I guess members. Uh, yeah. Is that from Leonard? That's Leonard, right? That's right. And I'm going to start putting a quote <laughs> back there occasionally. One that I like that I hear or somebody says or hear it on the water. So yep. what happens? That's, that's my quote for right now, Leonard. Fish harder. Yeah, it's, it's advice for anybody that's having trouble catching fish and they're out there skunking. What you need to do is very simple. Just follow, follow Leonard's advice, really sage advice. <laughs> fish harder. <laughs> nice, dude. Two words, simple. Very good. Very good. Let's end the show on that. See you guys. See you right, next good week. night, guys. <laughs> That's it. That's all we got. All right, so uh, we're, we have some announcements for you guys, and we have some edu right. some fishing educational stuff. I think we're talking about mission base specifically, right? Okay, so the agenda tonight, guys. So we got some a few announcements. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, mission base specifically because I know you guys, a little few of you are kind of intimidated by that. So we're going to give out some hints. Uh, you know, if you don't know who I am, by the way, uh, my Instagram is Brian's like the fish. Um, I'm cool baits pro staff and I've been fishing the local bays for almost 20 years. So I ha have some experience in the bays um, and I try to share that knowledge me and Roman both on this show. So t tonight, I'm going to talk a little bit about my experience in Mission Bay. Not that I'm know it all about it, but I try to. Uh, we all try to, as a group, yeah, I think share it, our experiences and become better fishermen for it. I, I think you need to update your introduction and start with I'm I'm co-host of Fishy Hour Wednesdays. That's right. Of uh, Brian Lexington, uh, of, 
uh, Bay Fishing with Roman and Brian. I'm co-host. And then you can go on with the rest of the stuff. <laughs> okay, here we go. You guys don't know who I am. I'm Brian, Brian Likes Fish on Instagram. Oh, wait, I already screwed up. Sorry. <laughs> if you don't know who I am, I'm the co-host of Fish Hour Wednesday nights with Roman and Brian Bay Fishing. <laughs> bay Fishing with Roman and Brian. <laughs> See, what is it's, going not, on? it's not easy, right? It's not easy. Uh, it's not uh, easy. Okay. Mouth is not working. I can't get words out of my mouth. <laughs> mouth is warming up. Mouth is warming up. That's right. All right, so we're going to talk about Mission Bay, and then guess what? We've been talking about maybe discussing this for a while. We're going to talk about real maintenance, what I do right when I get home from fishing saltwater. What do I do with my rod? What do I do with my reel? So we're going to go into exactly the procedures I do. I'm not going to tear a reel down, but I'm going to show you general maintenance on what to do with a spinning reel when you get home. And then uh, after that, we have, uh, if we want to discuss a few reel reviews, a few of you have been mentioning that you're looking at a new reel setup. So if we have time, we're going to do real reviews, and then we're going to have an open discussion on anything that we want to discuss for the, the end of the show, which is how we like to end it. That's uh, And during the show, if you guys want, you can type in chat. Roman will be watching chat while I'm talking. If you want to stop me and I can answer questions, either what I'm talking about or but basically anything fishing, go ahead and put it in chat with uh, capital letters question and then followed with the question. And at the end, we always end it with a movie review, and that's tonight's show. Very cool. Very cool. I dig it. So I announcements, it. Roman. Do you have any announcements? Uh, Leonard and I got a dub <laughs> yesterday in duos. Actually, we were playing trios. Steve wasn't with us, but Steve had to go halfway through the match. And then we just crushed it anyway because we we're awesome. Right, wow. Leonard? Woo! That Woo! is big news. Okay, okay, sorry, sorry. Okay, that's enough. Enough of that. <laughs> Uh, that's pretty much my announcement. <laughs> right. oh, yeah, and, I, and I'm in ketosis. That's a good one. And uh, the keto group is going strong. If you guys have any questions, you guys want to talk about that stuff, put it in the keto uh, subcategory in MFC Discord. Uh, if you're curious about it and want to try to figure out a different way to lose weight, hit us up. We're in there. It's kind of like a support group. If you're if if you haven't started with us from the beginning, you can start. You can offset. You can start. You can start now. Um, and we'll kind of. We'll kind of guide you through it, coach you through it, tell you what to look at, what videos to watch, and how to, like, plan it out. So, if you're interested in that kind of stuff. Cool. But other than that... And you, you guys already started losing weight? Oh, yeah, dude. I might get... No one, way. I might get 170 from 174 last week. Four pounds in about, one week? About four pounds. Oh, about... about uh, maybe maybe in the span of two weeks. Oh, yeah. that's, that's still good. I haven't weighed myself today. So, yeah, it should, should be... I'll wait myself later and figure it out. Well, but, congratulations, all you ketoers. Hopefully, good luck. Got to keep it going. Yeah, yeah. Keep it going. Get, stay healthy during these times exactly. and, and make you a better fisherman too, right? Exactly. Sharp, sharp, exactly. sharp as a tack. Right. All right. Uh, announcements. Mission Bay. Guess what? Spotty Bowl this weekend. Uh, so don't forget, guys, to make your to let Eric know in Discord what day you're going to be fishing. You have to do it before 6 a.m. the day you're fishing. So if you already know, go ahead and just type it in there. If you already know you're fishing Saturday, which I'm fishing Saturday probably, so do we have go ahead and just type it in there. Do we have anybody in chat that just signed up for the tournament and doesn't isn't familiar with the rules or has a question about the rules or how to measure your fish, anything like that that we can address for you now? It'll be a good way to us to refresh other people's minds. And if you have a specific question, please do put it in the chat. Yeah, I think we mentioned this last last week, but we did we hit forty guys. I think a few of our MMSCers finally signed up for the summer session. So thank you for signing up, and we're at forty, which means there'll be twelve playoff positions versus eight. And I, I got a shout out. I got to do a shout out real quick because Mr. Doug Rubin is when you in the house, coming in, coming in, in his garage, coming in with a with a true fan level donation, dude. Very cool. Thank you, Doug. Very nice of you, sir. Thank you so much. That's going to go a long ways towards uh, the expenses of making the show possible. So thank you. Very cool. Thank you, Doug. Uh, okay, so Mission Bay this week, Spotty Bowl. Okay, I've looked up the conditions. One thing I really noticed, guys, is the UV level. Now that it's summertime, yeah. dude, it's an 8 or 9. I think maximum's 10, right? So, yeah. guys, uh, it's not fun to get stuff burned off your face, skin cancer and stuff. Yeah. Wear your buffs. Put on that sunscreen, wear a big hat, all the above. You guys are veterans, you know it, but this weekend it's going to be, it's the, the UV index is out there. It's, it's not like winter. We're not going to have that much cloud cover. It's going to be 
So wear your sunscreen. Uh, it's going to be a little windy, Roman. At 1 o'clock, it's supposed to blow 10 to 12 miles an hour all three days. So wow. not too, too bad. But yeah, that's just standard Mission Bay. It seems like every time we're out there, like 1, 2 o'clock, it's... The wind kicks in, we go hide in the docks or and wait for it to blow through. But about four o'clock, it dies down a little bit. So yeah, very cool. 10 to 12 mile an hour wind. We've got a five foot tide swing, which to me, that's just about right. I like about a four, but a five is not a seven. So I'll take a five. So fishing should be excellent. I'm very planning cool. on, I'm planning on it being excellent. 5.12 is actual tide swing. So uh, water is probably going to be around 64 degrees, I'm hoping. So... The spot is going to get aggressive, guys. It's time for reaction bait time. Okay. Uh, oh, uh, 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 Hyder says, how about fishing times? I fish at very random times. Are there times I will not have access to the day's code? Uh, well, you always have the, we'll always have the day's code before the day starts. So if I don't see it up, I'll go. If, if uh, Eric doesn't put it up, I'll go in there. I'll make one up for that, ni- for that day. Uh, you will have it before 6 a.m., which is when you can start fishing. Uh, on fishing days, you can start at 6 a.m. and stop at, and you have your photo submitted by 8 p.m., okay? So I know it's kind of a, it's not really night fishing at this point, but it's, it's uh, those are the hours to keep it fair for everybody. Yeah, and Eric's put together the most lenient schedule tournament you're ever going to be in. You got an option of three different days, and you got a 14-hour time period each day to yeah. fish in, so. But you, but, you, but, you just, but, but you can only pick one day. You can only declare one day. Yep. So you got to fish Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. Okay. Yep. One of the three days. Yep. But it's a it's a nice schedule. Normally it's Saturday seven to two. You're out. That's your only time period. Eric's made a nice lenient schedule. Very cool. Okay. Uh, one more announcement. There's been a new category added to Spotty Bowl. Uh, this one, can't, this one, yes. <laughs> so I think it's Upgrade. gonna be kind of fun. Because this, this is kind of a – it's a category that uh, me and Eric thought of for something to do during pre-fish and also with the upcoming La Jolla season coming up where we're probably – when we're not fishing Spotty Bowl, we're going to be out exploring La Jolla again now that it's starting to warm up. Uh, it's biggest, heaviest bass, and it could be either a sand bass, calico, or spotted bay bass, any of the three. And uh, it's if you're in Spotty Bowl, there's no extra charge for it. It's already included in your price. It's just a, a fun category added. Um, I and me and Cool Baits have sponsored a $50 Cool Baits package to the winner. Um, so some, it's already the tab's already there. We've already started it. I think Salty's already leading it nice. at a, a 1.9 pound fish or something. Yeah, and just to, and just to be clear, guys, this isn't taken away from the. Uh submission towards the jackpot that we did for the normal tournament this is outside the tournament like brian said he sponsored or cool is sponsoring that prize and in no way shape or form does it affect the actual winnings for the spotty bull which is fishing for spotties and knockers okay so good yep this is just for me it's just something to fish during pre-fish or la jolla we're yes. going for that largest bass and it's probably not going to be a spotty would be my guess it's probably gonna be a sand bass or a calico so or a, or a halley makes it makes your pre-fishing a little bit more. No Halley. It's bass oh, only. No Halley. It's bass only. Okay, nice. Okay. Bass only. It's a three bass, sand, calico, and spotty. But so no, one of those three, heaviest one. But there's no, time, rest- get the- no time restriction on these. Yeah, once there's no time restriction. So okay. you can fish this thing from now Night till the mission. end of season two every day of the week if you want. There's cool. no, there's a code in it. It's a B, I think it's BF. The code's in there. Or I'm sorry, HF. It's it, code is HF, so include that code in your picture and put it in that category under Discord. So have fun with that, guys. That's going to be a fun one. Yeah, it's local waters only. Thanks, Eric. So it's just basically our local waters, which is our two bays and the La Jolla and Point Loma general area. We're not going down to Mexico. We're not going up to Newport. It's our, our local waters. Very cool. Um, I think that's it for – I have one more announcement. Do you have any announcements besides that, Roman? Um, last night, Leonard and I. I was <laughs> <laughs> Did you watch the blood sport together after it too in celebration? We should have. Shoot. We should, <laughs> I should have had it play in the background, except I'll get DMCA. Uh, so uh, um, I do have a link to the to the actual gameplay in the chat. So if you guys want to go watch the replay. <laughs> <laughs> Put it on. Let's watch it. Is it, do no, you, does your long. guy like stand up with a trophy? It's long. No, it's long. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, all, <laughs> all right, let's keep going. I'm get messing with you guys. Okay. Um, okay. <laughs> yesterday, um, yesterday, Roman announced this is one year, kind of the fishy hours one year anniversary. Woo! 
And yes, we've been, it still has been going for one year, believe it or not. And uh, he wanted some people to call in and, you know, talk about their experience a little bit. And I wanted to talk a little bit about it. And uh, uh, basically, Roman, uh, I want to thank you. Um, you started this show. Me and you, we talk a lot about this, but yeah. off off the air, I guess you'd say. Yeah. But I want to thank you, Roman. Uh, I'm going to get teared up now. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank you. Seriously, I want to thank you for starting the show. Uh, during a time, especially the beginning of COVID, when we were all kind of locked in our houses for those 60 days, and we had nothing to do. We were, it was a scary time. There was something serious going on, and they basically took away fishing from us, and you started a community. We went, I remember your very first show. I've been listening since the beginning. Cool. I was a fan. I was a, I was a fan before I was on the show, actually, guys. That's cool. So, I remember calling in, I think, on the second or third yeah. show and, yep. and talking about what I was doing. I was building a chicken coop at the time. I had nothing to do. <laughs> That's so funny. And, and this opened up a community of all these fishermen I've, I've met, you have met, and uh, it's made it a great year thus far. And I don't think it would have been the same if you wouldn't have started the show, at least for me. And uh, I want to thank you for that. And uh, uh, I, I really appreciate it. I know more than probably anybody, what goes into making this show. Because let me just take, for instance, me and Roman were on uh, before the show for probably a half hour. I'm not kidding. <laughs> adjusting my color, mics, blah, blah, blah. So you guys, this guy puts in a lot of time, man. He, I mean, he, it's, it's, more than you, it's more than just flipping a switch. I mean, he, he does it like a pro. Honestly, for me, he, he comes out and he can just spin all this out. I have notes prep. I, it takes me hours to get ready for a show. So but this guy, we'll he does it, it like a pro. We'll he makes it, it look easy. And I appreciate all the hard work, Roman. And I also want to thank everybody in chat for sticking with us from the very beginning. Yeah. Uh, you know what, who you are. You yeah. know what guys you are. You've, uh, you've been there from the beginning. And this show, me and Roman, and this show wouldn't exist without you guys. Spotty so Bowl. I, Spotty Bowl. Yeah. Discord, all the stuff. It's like stemmed into a bunch of great things, I, th I feel. And uh, there's a, there was a time when I was kind of done with it. I was kind of ready to just like f go full throttle into my regular YouTube channel, right, and, and end the Fishy Hour. And, and Brian stepped up, and he's like, you know what? I'll, I'll take the burden off of you for at least one day. I'll prep for the show. We'll do it Wednesdays. I'm not good at, at setting up a camera. I don't have, I don't have a, a nice scene, a nice setup. Uh, but if you want to work with me, I'll, I'll 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 try my best, and he did try his best, and he's doing great. So I also want to thank you, Brian. That's you, you've improved uh, significantly uh, a ton. So good 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 on you. I wanted to share with you guys. This is how much work I put into it, and this is <laughs> yes. all my notes for all my fishy hours. All this is this is what something. I do before the show. <laughs> I've got three binders full of notes. So it's not for me, it's not easy. I don't just come on a, and, and do it. I, I have to I spend the whole week thinking about it. And I only do one day a week and Roman does used to do five days a week and yeah, does three ways a week. So his pile is probably this tall. So thank <laughs> you, digital. Roman. Thanks for your hard work. So, <laughs> I didn't call cool. in because I wanted to say it to you live. Thank you. And uh, thanks to everybody in chat. Oh, uh, thanks, Brian. That's very nice of you. Oh, no, Doug's, I'm, Doug's I'm trying to <laughs> Yes, you guys are my best friends too. Oh, uh, Leonard says we Leonard says he's not crying. He has allergies. <laughs> <laughs> I don't cry. I work out. Ah. <laughs> but, all right. So enough of that. Very Let's cool. Thanks, Brian. Uh, Thank you, Roman. I was unexpected. I <sighs> We're just I'm two dudes. Wait, Ch wait. I have, I have, I'm not crying. Have a, I'm not crying. You're like crying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Oh, you have to Did make you? it louder. It's not loud enough. Oh no. Okay, let me turn it up. My my, I got my soundboard all adjusted here. <laughs> okay, there we go. This is a new one. Just a couple wild and crazy guys. <laughs> That's right. Just a couple wild and crazy guys hanging out, right, Roman? Nice. Exactly. Kind of. Exactly. Okay. Enough teary-eyed stuff. Take us some Thank cold you. ones. That's right. I can't wait until COVID. You get your vaccine. You're almost done. I mean, you're. Oh, it's, yeah. after it's, that, it's like three, week, three weeks after that. I'll be on the boat. That's right. We'll be, we'll be chilling. Skating. So we're, I, I'm starting to see a light at the end of the tunnel, guys. We're going to have yeah. that big barbecue. It's oh, going to yeah. be a good time. So. Oh, yeah. 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 So only better things to come, right? Yeah. Uh, not that this was bad, but it, oh, I, you know what? I, I got to thank another guy, Eric. Oh, yeah. Eric, 
I mean, you've put in a lot of time putting together Spotty Bowl. It's your invention. You came up with it. Uh, we're just a platform for your your Spotty Bowl. And uh, I think everybody's having fun with it. It's it's a long, fun tournament. So thank you, Eric. These thank are, you for your heart. These are so good. Captain Dan said, oh, I think I swallowed something lumpy. So he's not crying. <laughs> Oscar said, oh, I'm cutting onions right now. Not real tears. <laughs> can, I, can I reminisce a little bit? I'm going to. Go for it. So... Captain Dan, you specifically, man, I remember when this show first started, I think it was Dan's uh, birthday, and you let him have that was a, a interview for his one. birthday. It was like a, birth- a birthday party, right? I remember watching that and thinking, this is the most interesting guy <laughs> I've ever heard of. I mean, he's crashed airplanes, he's a Help. those vanilla ice, he <laughs> does all this for what movie produ- or show productions, and it, it, I would have never met somebody like Captain Dan or Coach or Salty or all you guys. You know who I'm talking about, Chad. Yeah, all no, you guys. I think, I, think, I think knowing Captain Dan automatically like skips like uh, three or four tiers in the in the what is it, six degrees of Kevin Bacon. <laughs> yeah. Like uh like probably, like I'm, probably what, I'm one tier. I'm like what? So now I'm like you're two what, tier three tiers. What was so so Vanilla Ice is two tiers now for me, right? Because I know Captain I guess, Dan. Yeah. Right. Captain Dan. And then Bam, nice. Look at that. That's like. Yeah, it's like I'm. I'm pretty good. I'm gonna win that game no matter what when we play next time. <laughs> hey Dan, request: Can you get Vanilla Ice to play at the uh, presentation of the awards at Spotty Bowl? Can we get a live entertainment? Wow! Wow! <laughs> yeah, and can he play that Ninja Turtle song? What? That song's awesome. <laughs> anyway, we're, we're gonna go late if I don't if I don't cut myself off here. So thanks everybody. All right, uh, Cal said a little late, but I made it. Bit. Is that what I missed? Oh, and Zach said, and Zach said uh, no, no. Uh, Hyder said, start crying, Cal. You missed out. The, <laughs> you missed out, Cal. You missed out all, all of the the uh, hilarious. Oh, hilarious. My eyeballs are just sweating. Uh, <laughs> oh, my God. That's so funny. That's funny. Yeah. Go, that's funny. Cool. That's Very cool. Hard to get that out, to be honest with you. All right. <sighs> okay. Oh. Uh- is it time for? Do you want to go to check your pork butt while I talk about some mission pay hints? It is. It's time. So I need to go wrap my pork butt. Woo! I'll wrap it up and I'll be right back. So I'm gonna. Do you want me to switch to the different view yet or not yet? Whatever view you want, full screen, half screen. I'm, it'll be like five minutes. I already set everything out, so I was ready to do yeah. it. I'll just hang out here with the guys. We'll talk about mission bay. All right, full screen. Here we go. Bye-bye. Yeah, you got it. All right. All right, guys, so I, I always am reading in chat that you guys are kind of intimidated by Mission Bay, and my goal is to, by the end of Spotty Bowl, you guys are going to like Mission Bay better than San Diego Bay. We've hit record on this because you guys are going to be saying that. You're going to say Mission Bay is better than San Diego Bay once you guys figure it out because I believe that's where the big fish are. And especially for you guys in kayaks, sometimes when I'm out there on my boat and I'm going through San Diego Bay and there's no speed limits and there's guys and yachts flying around and there's these huge ships, I get a little nervous for you guys, to be honest with you. Um, You guys are out in the middle of that area and I feel like it's dangerous. There's like swells and boats flying and jet skis flying everywhere versus Mission Bay is mostly five mile an hour zones where we fish. And I feel like you guys are a little safer in there. And I think uh pad- now, i'm not a kayaker but i think paddling around in there finding your fishing spots once you get that place down i think you're going to enjoy the environment the scenery and the uh, no big yachts waking you so i my goal is to get you guys good at fishing mission bay and at the end of this you're going to say mission bay is awesome you're not going to be intimidated by that okay so i'm going to give out a few hints um i got Seven hints I've got written down here that I want to give to you guys. And basically, it's stuff that I kind of go by by Fishing Mission Bay. Uh, Number one hint is explore. Uh, Go to different depths. Look for grass. Look for the drop-offs on your fish finder. And sometimes they're deep. Sometimes they're shallow. And uh, number one thing is don't linger. Don't sit there and sit under the North Ingram Bridge for 20 minutes, 30 minutes, hoping that a fish is going to go by. Explore. Get out there. You got to figure out Mission Bay. You're going to you're going to you're going to end up finding some nice spots, especially those grassy spots, especially those drop-offs. And when you find that spot, make sure if you have a fish finder, you save that. If you don't, just mentally look around you and kind of get your bearings so you can go back to that spot. So explore. Um, fish the docks, but don't don't 100% rely on those docks cuz 
sometimes those docks are good and sometimes they're just a ghost town. So make sure you try the docks, but don't, don't have that like your plan A all the time. I'm just going to sit there. I'm going to fish docks nonstop and uh, hope that there's going to be a fish there. Have a plan B. Don't make the docks. Everybody, I mean, I fish the docks. Everybody fishes the docks, but don't make them your only game plan, uh, especially when the water is super clear. Uh, I recommend the docks early in the morning and probably in the evening, but if the water is super clear, it's hard to catch fish there. So, so don't totally rely on those. Uh, one thing that probably Coach and I both do is when it's not windy and the surface is it's that early morning and that surface is nice and calm look at the water so when you're looking around and you see some rocks jettisoning out of the bay some riprap or um, you see a difference in uh, calm water to maybe a little ripple water that tells you that something underneath the water is going on so if you see a big patch of calm water there's no rocks around and then all of a sudden it's ripply it's probably because there's a drop off right there and it's creating that ripple. So when you're in your kayak and it's calm, when it's windy, it's hard to spot this stuff. But when it's calm, look around, keep a good eye on that water and where those variations from calm water to ripples are, there's usually fish lingering in those spots because it's drawing stuff up. Uh, the, the, the water changes. Uh, another thing to look for is those peninsulas. So if you see something jetting out, and the water's rushing past that on an incoming tide, say, right on the other side of that is calm water. And sometimes those fish will want to sit right in that calm water. So keep your eyes open. It's not always what's going on under the water, but a lot of the time it's what you see on the top surface of the water. So keep an eye on that, guys. Very cool. Uh, what yeah. up, fatty, fatty Fishing in the house? What's up? Welcome back. I see... Uh, Mo Outdoors, what's up? Welcome back. Uh, I think I've seen you here before. Do we have uh, a crappie fishing in California? We, I think we do. Uh, most of us fish, fish saltwater, but we do have some lakes where, they do, where we do have crappies. Absolutely, we have crappies. We have crappies up in Cuyamaca Lake. We have yep. them all over the place. Yep. But yeah, welcome. So I was just I was talking about uh, Mission Bay, Roman, and I was talking about some things to visually look for. Um, a few hints on it because we're coming into it for spotty bowl. Um, I just talked about looking at the surface of the water. Uh, if you see, especially when the wind is calm and early in the morning, if you see a change in the water, there's probably something going on underneath the surface yeah. of that. Um, um, you know, when you see the, you can, you can see the current trails. Exactly. Like I was saying, when the there's a peninsula like, coming out, yeah. there's something jetting out mm -hmm. from the shoreline. When that water hits that and pushes off to the side, the water behind it is nice and calm. So those are always, always something to look for, guys. Um, okay, another hint. Uh, fish the riprap. I talked about this a million times, but during slack tide, uh, especially high slack tide, when you can get into that riprap, I think those spotties are in there feeding on those little fish that hide in those rocks. So at high tide, slack tide, get in there and fish those riprap. The riprap is a rock that basically is the rock all along the shore of mission bay don't be afraid to get like right in there cast parallel with it slack tide high tide that's what i would go there because that's the time when the grass is probably just standing still the spotties are looking for stuff to go by so they go to where they know food's going to be which is hiding in those rocks so that would be one hint that i'm going to give you for that a uh, video game fish so if you're having a day where you just can't find them and you're lucky enough to have a fish finder like, like uh, uh, Dario said, trust that thing sometimes. If you see fish down there, there probably are fish down there. Look for those structures. That re and that reminds me of, of what I was going to say when Dario was on, but I let him talk and I forgot what I was going to make this point. But you just reminded me of the point now. Um, guys, what you're seeing on the fish finder is uh, when, you, when, you, when you see the actual the, the mark for a fish, the part that you're seeing is actually quite small because what's what's deflecting is either the sonar wave goes down and it hits a hard object and then bounces back to the receiver and then you can uh, detect whatever's there, like the bottom structure. If it's a fish, a fish isn't hard like a rock, right? It's kind of like it's it's organic. So what you're seeing, the, the darkest part of the shape of the fish that you're seeing in your fish finder is actually the air bladder it has inside, okay? Uh, that, that it uses to control how deep it's floating in the, in the water column. Okay, so that little pocket of air, 
that's the biggest, uh, the hardest thing the the sound is going to get, the sonar is going to hit and not bounce back. It basically dissipates into the space, into the air, inside that little air bladder. So you get that hard mark, you get that red mark in the middle. That's why you get like a weird, like a little, like a little uh, upside down. Rainbow thing. looking thing, like yeah. Rainbow thing. And towards the head, kind of towards like the air bladder, it'll be like a little beginning of a rainbow and then it'll get dark red and then it'll go back into like the rest of the rainbow will be like light, right? That hard sub, that hard thing you're seeing is uh, is the air, the air bladder. So that air bladder is pretty small relative to the fish. So if you're seeing little marks, it could still be a nice fish. Okay. So that's kind of a thing I wanted to bring up. That's awesome. And, you know, I think, Roman, in the future, we've talked about it. We're going to have to do some kind of uh, fish finder uh, we'll, we'll topic, oh, cool. yeah. I should say. Yeah. Break it down the bay a little bit. Yeah. That's, that's an upcoming show, I think, guys. I think I, think I want to do that with. Uh, I want to do that eventually, but with maybe like once I start going out more and I uh, get the vaccine done, we'll do this. I want to do uh, in the water what it looks like, like up close with the camera, and then pair that up with the sonar. That way you can do side by side. Oh, that'd be so. And cool. it's like it, it'll be like a hist- not 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 a story, but it'll be like a, something we can archive and always look back to and be like, all right, if anybody comes into the chat and says, "Hey, I just got my new sounder. I don't know what everything looks like. What am I supposed to be looking for?" Okay, well here's a picture. Here's an example. We'll do like a blog post about it. Here's an example of what it looks like when you're on, on sand. Here's what it looks like when you're on grass. Here's what it looks like yep. when there's like a shopping cart down there or something, right? I <laughs> Wait, I got right? it. So here's what it looks like when Roman's under my boat swimming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <It's not arch. laughs> Don't drop your anchor right now. That's Roman's bladder. That's funny. Oh, that's hilarious. Imagine <laughs> my lungs. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be fun. Let's do yeah, that. Okay, that's, that, that's in the works. You know, so video game fish guys uh, if you're lucky enough to have fish finder uh, use it um we talked, about this, we've talked about this before find clean grass so pay attention to what you're pulling in if you're pulling in your a rig and that thing's covered in that green ooky moss grossness probably not going to be any fish there move on look for that clean green new looking fresh grass and uh my number one suggestion is keep moving never linger don't stay in the same spot for 30 40 minutes hoping you'll get a fish just keep moving and when you do find them it's on that means you found them and you're probably going to get more than one i bet you anything when dario and salty uh, won the tournament last week then when they found them they found them and they probably just sat there and pulled them in so when you find them get one quickly get your picture and quickly get back down in that same spot and see if you can get another because sometimes uh, the, the big guys are all hanging out together Chad has a question. How many casts, how many casts different baits do you try in one location before moving? Oh, that's a really good question. That's a really good question. 16. <laughs> 16 casts? Okay. No, no, I don't. For me, Go ahead. I, I really don't have a number. Um, so I'll cast, me and Roman both fan cast, so I'll cast out, pull it in. If I don't get any nibbles, no nothing, I'll cast, cast, cast. Fan cast is just casting in all directions. You can even cast 360 degrees in a circle. Just keep casting. Um, if you feel no nibbles at all, uh, maybe try it again. Go another rotation. If you know it's a spot that looks fishy, that is good grass, try it again. But let's say that rotation took 10 or 15 minutes. If you didn't get anything, move on. Yeah. Okay, that, is that kind of similar to what you would do? Yeah, so it's different, it's different from the kayak than it is from shore. If, it was, if I was doing it from shore, I would do like uh, maybe like five casts in a right. fan. In a fan, right? So I'm standing on shore. I'm, I'm casting straight out, and I'll do two, two one to each side, and then one more to each side at a bigger angle. And then uh, if I don't get any nibbles or anything, I move on. Uh, if I do get a nibble at, at one spot, then I cast in that same exact spot until I don't get nibbles or bites. And then I won't move on from there until I get two or three casts without any action. I t- totally agree with that. So and then when we say move on, we don't mean like move on to the other side of the bay. We're talking maybe move on 50 yards yeah. or move out of that casting zone that you were just in. Just move, 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 move. Right. But now I, now I know that that's from shore. So I know that, that Zach's fishing on a kayak. So on a kayak is different. You're, you're always, right, you're always moving. No matter what, you, no matter if you think that the current is not moving, if it's dead, you're still always moving. Even if it's a couple of feet. Okay. So you might be thinking you're casting the same spot. You're not. Go to your GPS. Make sure you have your, your plotter on so you can see what you're, what you're, what you're, what you're, uh, where you've drifted for the day or you traveled for the day. And come back to that spot where you, where you cast it. And then that way you have like a good point of reference to keep hitting that same spot 
And then once that stop, once that spot stops producing, then start fan casting around that. Do that 360 from that same c- spot where you were fishing earlier. And as soon as you get a bite or a nibble, again, you want to hit that spot at least two or three more times without getting a bite. Does that make sense? Without getting a a, a nibble or a or a bite. Yeah. yeah. Yep. As, and then second question to the second part to that question was, uh, you know, if I'm using a lure, let's just say I'm casting a crankbait and I'm getting nothing on it. If you've gone three, four, five, six spots, you've got nothing. I usually have like five poles tied up at any given moment and I'll try something else. I'll, you know, if you're, you're really trying to get a crankbait fish, go for it. But if they're not biting it, they're not biting it. Some days they're biting it. Some days they're not, you know, some days you got to slow stuff down. Some days they want that fast reaction bite. So always have a bunch of baits tied up. And if you've gone 30 minutes without a nibble on that thing, maybe it's not your location, it probably is your location, but maybe it's not, maybe it's your presentation. So try something different. Always have a plan B, right? Leonard and a C. So that's my last, my last, I see, uh, Hint on fat, that is move. Fatty fishing got some uh, commentary. Yeah, you can your kayak moves, but if you got aiming, you can cast into the same spot. Very true, especially if you if you're fishing relative to something you can see from the surface. Then yeah, you can drift a little bit and keep casting to, to the same spot. But my 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 uh, example was more like when you're out in like the middle of like the in front of a ski beach, for example, right where you don't have any point of reference because you're drifting around and it's open water basically. Uh, true story, Brian. Try try another set. Try another setup. Yep, Let's try another setup. Very cool. Uh, Zach's got a question. He says, if your boat slash dinghy starts to go under and you just <laughs> let it sink, is that considered littering? <laughs> what? <laughs> yes, you're gonna you're gonna be charged uh, to get that thing hauled out. <laughs> Hopefully, that never happens. That's funny. Okay, yeah. Is that the final question? Okay, guys, so tonight, the main subject tonight, uh, since we're running behind, I'm probably going to have to talk faster than I'd like, but uh, since uh, the main subject tonight is real maintenance. Cool. So what do we do? I think we've, we've hinted about this subject many times. We've talked about reels. We've talked about, we've been talking a lot about gear lately. Yeah. I think it's because when we first started this show, Roman, we really hit like fishing techniques. We hit baits. We hit you know, water conditions. We hit all this stuff. And then now... Now we've hit all that. We're kind of hitting the uh, the gear portion of it, and I, I I'm having fun with the gear portion of it. I like talking about gear. I like talking about anything fishing. Oh, you know one thing I, I just thought of, Roman. This time last year, uh, end of this month, we hit up the secret halibut spot. Oh, did you? And that spot we did the whole group, and that spot. Remember, we were catching so many halibuts; they were like a nuisance. Was that this time of the year? Yeah, it was April, May, and uh, I want to uh, uh, maybe talk about this, guys, maybe on one of our uh, non-spotty bowl days, putting yeah. together that same group that kind of we had last time and going trying that same spot, because I think at the end of this month or the beginning of May, that secret halibut spot's going to be going off because those big halibuts are coming in to, to lay their eggs and, and, and do what they do. So I think the halibut time is it's just right around the corner. So while it was in my head, I wanted to mention that, guys. Let's get a halibut day going again. That was a lot of fun I remember last year. It was, <laughs> I was think a, it was yes. the end of April. I'll check my I'll double check my photos, but I think it was end of April. All right, it's on. It's on. Yeah, halibut day. And you guys that participated in that definitely remember remember that day. I think all of us had probably like a. Uh, at least maybe not all legals, but I know we had a bunch of legals come out of that day. And uh, I think we all had at least four or five halibuts. So it was a crazy day. Very cool. Right, somebody's going to have to, somebody's got to put out the smoke signal to get jet to come back in. I know. Right? Participated in that day. Where's jet? Where's John? Boston whaler, John too. Where are you guys? I know, right? Smoke signal, smoke signal. It's time oh, to start fishing oh, again. Oh, oh, oh. I'm looking at my bullet journal that we updated yesterday, guys. And I'm adding that to the, to the journal, but I also have a note here. I sent out a uh, spotty shirt, spotty, spotty bull shirt uh, emails yesterday to everybody that ordered the shirt, giving you two options, whether you want a full refund or you're okay with getting the non SPF long sleeve shirts in white. And so if you get back to me on that, that'd be great. I need you to get back to me with option one or two and also confirm the size you want. We could do any size now, not just, uh, I know last time I couldn't do extra large, but we can do any right. size now. Okay. So just a quick reminder. If you ordered a shirt, 
Cool. Oh, and, and we're going to do uh, the same shirt in short sleeve. Uh, I'll put that up on the site, so, and that'll be available. So it'll just be like print on demand. You guys can buy it when you need it. Any color? Um, probably white and red and, I don't know. Gray? Green, maybe. Blue. Cool. One for every day of the week. <laughs> nice. <laughs> cool. All right. I can't wait to get mine. I'm looking forward to wearing that thing. All right. So sorry I got a little off subject, guys, but that just came to my head about the halibuts. I'm sure Coach will agree with me. Those halibuts are going to start start getting good. Okay, main subject, real maintenance. So let me show you uh, basically, here's my Nazi spinning reel. This is the reel I intentionally did not clean this this, this week after fishing. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do a general cleanup. It's I'm not tearing this thing down. I'm not gonna open it up and clean the gears and everything. I'm just gonna show the basic maintenance of what you do when you get home from the bay. Some things you're gonna need first, Roman. Um, you're gonna need some rags. So I like these. They come in like a 24 pack at Home Depot. They're just these microfiber kind of blue rags. Everybody's seen these at Home Depot, uh, cookie I get, rags. I, get, like, I get these at Costco. Same, like, same, same yeah, idea. same yeah. thing. Yeah. Home Depot sells 24 of these for 10 bucks. It seem to last forever. I use those things for everything. Uh, you can use these only if you have like a really heavy scuff on them. That's the magic pad erasers. Those oh, things yeah, will yeah. clean anything. You're gonna need a spray bottle. Um, you can reuse an old spray bottle. Uh, just make sure you clean it out really good. Or you can go buy one of these, probably five bucks maybe. Uh, what I put in a spray bottle is I have, uh, I fill it with water and then I use the same thing I use to flush my boat and to clean anything off, which is salt away. Uh, this product is made to basically do exactly what it says, get away, get the salt away from the product. So I use this to flush the engine in my boat every time I, every time I go out. That's why I've got a gallon. You don't have a boat you're probably not going to get one this big you, they sell it in a little tiny thing so this is what i use in this spray bottle and this is a concentrate so this stuff goes a long ways i'll use one cap full uh it's it says to mix it 500 to one I'm, I'm not very good at math so i just use one cap full for this entire bottle and this thing will last a very long time so 500 to one one cap full is what i use if you don't have that, you can use some very mild like uh, dish soap, same stuff you'd use on your dishes, but it's literally Roman, like one drop. You don't need to use a lot of it. Don't, don't put an inch of soap in there. It's just going to make a mess and it's not going to be good yeah. for your reel. Just, it, I recommend salt away because we do a lot of saltwater fishing or plain, just plain water would work too. But if you, if you want to get a little of the grease or a little of the grime off, one drop in this entire thing of dish soap. Uh, other things I use are going to be real oil. So if uh, you have any reels, you're definitely going to need real oil. Um, without this, you'll be running metal on metal dry. And uh, eventually, it'll sound like a coffee grinder. It, you, have to, you have to maintain these things. You think you can get away with it until you cast out that A-rig. And then it's like. I use that same oil, Lucas Oil. Yeah, this is probably the most common. They got it at most of bait shops. The cool thing about this one, I'm sure the reason you bought it too, Roman, is it's got that little the metal applicator. Little, pin, little yeah. pinpoint applicator. Uh, this is a general oil. It's pretty good for almost uh, all the general maintenance on it. I also use this stuff. It's uh, called Real Butter. Oh, yeah. Yep. And no worries, Carl. Reason uh, feel free to hang out and watch the rest of the show. You can come back and watch the replay for the beginning. But, yeah, if you have any questions also, uh, just put them in the chat. Yeah, and Roman's watching chat while yep. I'm talking, so please, any questions or want, want me to talk about something specific or slow down, let me know. So I use this real butter, and the reason I bought this is it, becomes, it comes with the grease, which uh, you'll, you use also in your reel. Not tonight, we're not going to use that. It comes with uh, bearing oil, which is that. a different type of oil, and then it comes with your general real oil. So if you're planning on doing right. a full maintenance on, like Salty does, where it breaks down the whole reel, you're going to need all three of these fluids. This is more of just a general maintenance fluid. So, but this is what we're going to use tonight. Uh, Chad, I sent uh, the, Chad, I sent the email to the address that you use to purchase your shirt. So whatever address you, you use at checkout, that's the address where the email went to last night. Okay. I got my email. I sent back option two. Yes, I still want a shirt. Ooh. I just want a, I guess, cotton shirt, not SPF <laughs> shirt. 
Uh, okay, another thing you're going to... Oh, and if you're lucky, guys, sometimes when you buy Shimano reels, they actually come with a little thing of ro- real oh, oil yeah. or some of the other brands do. So they come with this little thing. If, if that's all you got, that'll still work. Um, just doesn't have that nice applicator. I use a lot of these. Um, Q-tips, you got to be careful with them because they're cotton and those little strands, if you get them in certain parts, they'll gum it up. They make a, a specific... looks like a Q-tip, but it's got a foam tip. And those are much better. You don't have to worry about that cotton getting wrapped into things. Uh, you just got to be very careful with these. I use these. I just you just got to keep an eye on it. Make sure you don't get that in there. I would recommend if if you go on Amazon and order a bunch of those. I just don't have any of those tonight. But those foam Q-tips are much better, much more. And then you're going to need probably a small pair of pliers, like a little needle nose ones. And tonight, I'm going to be using a Phillips screwdriver. I am. So that is all the stuff for tonight. Very cool. All right. All right. I'm, I'm going to have to talk fast because this is going to go long. All right. No, it's all, it's all good. I have time. All right. Beats on the so grill. first thing first thing I do you is this, the rod. It? The rod, you have to still maintain. <laughs> rod I, okay, you still, There's a ghost. You still have to maintain these, believe it or not, Roman. Um, uh, we spend big money on these rods. I mean, some are 50 to 300 bucks. So you don't want to just clean your reel and don't do anything with your rod. Uh, what I do with this is the same thing I do with the reel. I'm going to go ahead and take my salt away spray. I'm just going to spray it directly on this blue rag. And I'm just going to wipe. I'm just going to wipe all the salt off of it. So you'll once you wipe it all off, you'll see that shine come back that originally had. And while you're doing this, this is the best time to inspect it. Look at your guides, make sure they're not bent, make sure they're, uh, they're none of the ceramic parts are cracked or missing. This is the time to inspect your gear. Like if I look at this, this is my favorite rod, by the way, this is a Shimano Zodius. I love this rod. This one is missing an eyelid right on the hair. So I have to get that repaired. I still use it without it, but it's not the same rod without it. So, so what do you but do? If you're, how do you get it repaired? I don't know how to repair it. So Cal has a guy, I guess okay, you take cool. it to a shop, Very takes cool. a week or two and uh, they'll repair it. I don't do those repairs. It would probably look terrible if I tried it my first time. And I want to try it on like a cheaper rod if I do that. Yeah. If, if the tip, if the tip breaks off, if the tip, uh, the first, the, the last guy, I guess one on the tip that, if that fails, most shops can do it for you like on the fly pretty fast, but for anything yeah, else, so, that would be more involved. Yeah. Yeah. The tip breaks off. It's a bummer. If some of these rods, like uh, Phoenix, will I mean, replace I mean the guide, it for I mean the guide a feet. Yep. But if you want to fish it that day, you could buy, have them install a brand new tip. It's just an inch shorter, and yeah, usually if, that'll work just yeah, fine. Or if the guide just breaks, not the tip. If you, if the guide yeah. just breaks, they can usually uh, heat it up, take it off, and put a new one for you really pretty quick. It's the other guys that are kind of more complicated to to redo because they have the wrap. Yeah. So wipe this thing down, inspect it. That's your time. There's not much maintenance on this besides keeping it clean and making sure all the components on it are still like new. I like to keep them nice and shiny. That way you go out, feels like you're fishing that brand new rod. It's not all salty. It doesn't have fish scales all over. It doesn't look all nasty. It's a good feeling picking up that that shiny looking rod you spent all that money on. So okay. The reel. Reel a little bit more maintenance in this. So first thing you're going to do when you get it out is you're going to inspect it. You're going to look at it. Uh, you're going to spin it. Does it sound grindy? Does it, does it, does it something out of balance? Uh, this reel looks like it's doing pretty good. I don't see any, any loose anything on it. Just check the handle. Everything feels solid. So there's no repairs that need to be done. So we just have to do general maintenance on this. Uh, first thing I do is I remove this spool. And I remove the spool because I don't want to mess with the line on it, Roman. Like we're going to be spraying this stuff on it. We're messing with oils. If your your hands are going to eventually get dirty, and you don't want to get all that junk all over your expensive braid, so first thing I do is remove this spool. Oh, there you go, uh, Cal's guy on ST Fish, guys. You can find him on stfish.com. If you guys do happen to sign up for ST Fish, go to go to uh, romancastro.com ST Fish, and I'll get credit for for sending it to the site. It's it's nothing, but it's just kind of fun. I want to beat Coach. <laughs> <laughs> I have never been on SD you Fish. Got, I gotta uh, go in there and check it out. So if you guys go on there, look for for uh, Jorge or Ron Actor on SD Fish. Cool. He can fix your rods in a couple of days. Oh, that's cool. Depending on how busy he is. Don't take us for granted. Don't take us for oh Roncador. Oh Roncador. That means like that means snorer. Snorer. Spanish for snorer. How come everything's a competition? Everything. 
<laughs> because <laughs> it just is because we're dudes right that's what we do all right so be i've taken off the school and this is a spool cap and put that aside for now and now i'm going to go ahead and remove this is like the little it, it creates the click on it and it has a couple of little washers in there i'm going to go ahead and pull that out and i like to keep that all in one piece and pull it out exactly how i pulled it out and set it on the table so when i pick it up it goes on there directly how it is. Okay. So I've got all that removed. The line is off now. Now I'm going to go ahead and I like to just lightly spray it. So this thing, imagine this, you've been fishing it all day in the salt water. It looks crusty. It looks like, you know, it's got salt all over it. So I just, I, I'm not going to sit here and I'm going to hose it, especially where the shaft part goes in. Cause all, you don't want to get water down in this part right here. Uh, because that leads to everything on the internals. Uh, it had the saltwater ones have a little seal right there, but it's water resistant. It's not totally waterproof. So when you're be careful, don't sit here and hose into that particular location. I just kind of missed the reel. I mean, real lightly. If you can see that, it's just basically a little mist on it, and that's just to get that salt away on there and get some water on there, and that way we can wipe it all down and get that that residue off. So spend your time going through every little part, every little nook and cranny, getting that slime off, all those fish scales. If you're using live bait or other bait, oh, yeah, there's gross. all kinds of junk in it. Look for that, that green moss that seems to always get in there. And this is a good time also to wipe down this shaft portion of it too. So get all that, that extra grease off there. Just go through, spend your time. It's like detailing a car. Detail it out and go around it. And you'll notice that your rag is starting to get really dirty. You can use a paper towel on this too. You don't have these microfibers. Paper towels work pretty good. But I've got that thing pretty polished up, at least for the show. That's how polished I'm going to do it. So now that we've polished it all up, uh, we've cleaned it off. I've cleaned it. We're going to look at it and inspect it for sand and grass, any kind of debris. Sometimes in this spot right here where the – in this, this spot right here, you'll get a little bit of debris in there and that will cause a little bit of grind. So if you see anything in there, clean that out too. All right, next thing we're gonna do is we're going to, this thing has all kinds of moving parts on it, Roman. It's got the bail system, yep. it's got the handle, it's got the handle bearing here. I like to take this handle off. If you don't take this handle off every once in a while, when you go to take it off, that thing's gonna be like frozen on there. It's gonna be, <laughs> you're gonna go to turn that knob it's not going to turn. You're going to end up getting that channel locks out to try to get that thing off, and it's just going to be frozen. So I like to take this apart, take the handle off, and clean that portion and also lube those threads up so that when you do need to get that handle off, it'll come off. Don't wait two years to take that, take that out. And then this should just pull out nice and smooth. And the reason they do that is you can actually, on most of these reels, you can make them lefty or righties. They're interchangeable. Oh, that's cool. So, uh, Eric, yeah. Eric Klein. What up, Eric? Welcome back to the show. Eric wants to know if he should stop using his hose on full blast. For sure. <laughs> Eric, <laughs> has it been working for you? I, I don't particularly do that. I don't think the manufacturers recommend that because what it'll do is it'll take that surface salt and it'll push it into the internals of that reel. Yeah. And it's actually pushing a lot. You would think it would be like a, a flushing but it's not. It's just filling that up, and that some of that water is going to linger in there. And then when that water evaporates and dries, it's yeah. going to leave that salt, salt still yeah. in the reel. So yeah. So if you do uh, that, yeah, if you do that, the water that you're forcing in there dilutes the, the salt, but it's mixed in, so now it can go into the reel. And then when it dries, the salt stays behind, and that, that adds up and adds up and adds up. And next thing you know, your your reel is seized everybody has done this everybody does that hoses them off there's sometimes you go on those half day boats and the deck hands just take that hose and just everybody's reels that's what you gotta put and that, i've uh, even put i even the... used to back in the day i would like fill the sink full of water and just <laughs> like a propeller under there and you know i i thought it was doing good but it, i think it takes the uh life out of the reels um so i would not do that i'm more partial to just wiping it down but if it works for you go for it oh he's kidding all right. Well, good. That oh. was a good. It was a good question anyway, because uh, maybe somebody's doing that. So, cool. yeah, I would say stick with the mist, stick with the wipe down. Don't hose it down. Don't soak it. So, okay. So now you've got your handle off, right? So this is the part where you're going to go ahead and take your rag, and you're going to clean this thing up. You get a little bit into these joints, clean those up. 
test this out. This is spinning nice and freely. And this is when we're gonna do our first bit of oil. So this is gonna get kind of silly. This is gonna turn into Beavis and Butthead moments. So everybody, here comes the giggles. We're gonna oil the shaft. Don't laugh, Roman. <laughs> I'm waiting for you, I'm waiting for you to like uh, to lose dexterity. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna take and with oil, sometimes less is more. You don't want to just sit here and like just cake it on there because that's gonna end up getting in places and it's gonna end up attracting uh, dust and, and debris and all that. You want like a thin layer over it. You don't want to just. It's not like a car part where it's like thoroughly oiled. I'm talking, I'm going to put on this two drops and then I'm going to take my Q-tip. Well, that is, that is a little bit. I'm over, I'm overdoing it. Yeah. Some guys like more oil than others, I guess, but I'm into a less is more kind of thing. And then I'll <laughs> go ahead and I'll get another drop or two on the actual Q-tip itself. And then I'm just going to go ahead. Can you, am I holding this correctly? I'm going to go ahead and just kind of wipe that on the shaft portion. And the reason, I mean, this is not like a moving part where you have to worry about it squeaking or anything. What I'm oiling this is, is so that next time we pull this, try to get this thing out, it comes out. Uh, it's not like seized in there. So we're getting that corrosion off this thing, getting that metal nice and clean. It's going to fit better. It's going to go back into there. I mean, this is totally going to turn into Beavis and Butthead moment if I want, but you got to oil the shaft. Is this a metal? Yes. Uh, guys, there's 28 likes and 32 people in the chat. Do me a favor and like the stream while we're live. And also, he did mention metal. I want to mention TB Metal Art. If you haven't right. seen his artwork, it's a, it's beautiful. TBMetalArt.com. Go check oh, it out. I forgot to put mine up tonight. Uh, sorry about that, Todd. And uh, there is a joint right here also where I'm going to go ahead and put some oil in there. So that's nice and work that in there nice and smooth. And I'm also going to put a drop or two in this right here. This is actually a bushing on this one. It's not a bearing. Um, some of the more expensive ones have a bearing and you don't need to oil those as much, but this is a bushing. So I'm going to go ahead and oil that and work that into it. And anytime you get any excess oil, just go ahead and wipe that off. Now we're going to go ahead and put the shaft back so, in the reel so that 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 uh the handle bearing or bushing yep it it, it, it could be easily overlooked and if your reel feels rough it could be that it could be that that's sticking so yeah and if this is not working correctly and this is not working correctly and you're reeling this in and uh -huh. it feels like you're on the bottom mm -hmm. it may just be some resistance in this exactly. it may be some resistance in your reel and you're not getting the, the total feel of the bottom so this yeah. this part is very important yep cool. make sure that's going to Okay, so now I've got the shaft back in the reel, and then I've got the threaded part. I'm going to put one drop of oil on the threads here. I'm not even going to use a Q-tip on that. I don't need to. So this is like a little threaded screw that holds that together. So we're going to go ahead and put that in. The reason I put that oil on there is so that next time that thing will loosen up again. Cool. Uh, Michael G has a question. What reel is that? This is uh, a Shimano Nasi. Reel. I love these reels because they're usually 99 bucks or 119. That's they're a, saltwater rated and they seem to really buck. last. It's a good value right there for sure. We we did a we did yeah. a whole show on these reels and uh, this is one of the one of the best values out there right now for the quality, the quality yeah. to price ratio. If you go if you go more expensive, you don't get that much more. Uh, if you go cheaper, you're gonna get a lot less. So this is a good in between. Uh, yeah. What size is this? This is a three three thousand. 2500. 2500. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's what that's, what, that's the size I recommend 2500 if it's going to be your first spotty setup. Yeah, and you have the Daiwa Fuego and that's probably the yeah. Daiwa equivalent of this guy. Yep. I think they're about the same price, right? Yep. So, if you're a Daiwa guy, Fuego, if you're a Shimano guy, maybe go for this Nasi. I'm a fishing guy. <laughs> <laughs> are you a Toyota guy or are you a Chevy guy? You're... I'm a I'm a I'm a Toyota Tundra Tundra dude. Toyota Tundra yeah. <laughs> yeah, I have I have dial reels. I have uh Alba Garcia's 13s, Shimano's. I like all the reels too. I try to find out all, find the reel I like and I go with that. Okay. I put that on backwards. Now it's all all, right. all fishing but, all fishing sponsors welcome and encourage please do contact yes, us. Yes, especially Shimano. If you're watching the Shimano, please contact us. <laughs> I'm not Love back that to a regular schedule program. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, so we've got. Oh, but that you know what? It's true, dude. Uh, like, if, if, we don't, if we don't put it out there, it's not gonna get out there, right? If anybody in here in chat knows anybody that works for a fishing company, I'm talking even like uh, sunglasses, hats, boats, fishing reels, fishing rods, baits, tacos, yes, tacos, burritos, <laughs> uh, pizza ovens, Traegers, <laughs> pork butts. Any, anything that you, that that you feel would would match up with our show, and you want an opportunity to advertise with us, we could put a little banner for you right here, like in between Brian and I. We could put like a little, a little like uh, a little rotating banner that spins around and says like every ten minutes, every five minutes, it, it switches to a different sponsor, that kind of stuff. So we'll figure something out to get you involved in the show, and we'll give you shout outs, kind of similar to what we do with with Todd at TB Mellow Art. Uh, Todd's like already grandfathered in because he's been a supporter of the show since the beginning, but we'll work out a deal with you. Uh, get you on the show as a sponsor. That'd be fantastic. All right, now back yeah. to the regular sketch program. All right, so then we've wiped it down. We've got, gone ahead and lubed up the handle. Now we're going to go ahead and do a little detail work. So we have a little bit of oil now on this Q-tip, and you're going to look in some of these nooks and crevices in here, these little crannies, and you're going to go ahead and start <clears throat> cleaning these out. And it's like a white glove service here, Roman. When you <laughs> go in there the first time, you're going to notice your Q-tip is filthy. You're like, oh, my gosh, that's dirty. Just keep going in there until you get that Q-tip coming out nice and clean. That means you've got all the gook, all the, the debris from that day. Take that thing, go in all the little crevices, get around. I'm not going to do the whole reel because it'll take forever, but go around with that Q-tip. Like I said, though, make sure that that cotton does not break off and get into any moving parts because that could cause some friction and bind up. So. Be careful with it, but white glove service your reel. Get it nice and shiny. Uh, next thing we're going to do is we're going to use our reel oil, and we're going to go ahead and put a few drops on all the moving parts. So we've got this bale. That thing gets a workout. It's probably opened for me like That's hundreds true. of times per day. Yeah. So I just literally take this. Am I holding this good, Roman? That's good, yeah. And I go to the moving parts, and I put a drop, maybe two drops. Don't don't just sit here and like squeeze this thing and, and, and <laughs> ooze it down on there. It's going to, it's going to take you longer to clean that up than what anything that it's doing. So literally like a drop. And then once you've got that drop on there, let gravity do its work and then just work it, just work it. This is your workout. Work it in there. <laughs> work in the bail. Work in the bail, work in the bail. And then once you've got that uh, worked in there, might do that for a minute or two. Go ahead and take a cloth and wipe off the excess in Mark, those two areas. Mark G wants to know what time can he drop off his reels for service? Never. <laughs> I, that's a salty dangler thing. I just, I just, I don't really service the reels. I just wipe them down, clean them, oil them, and hopefully. And then if I have a problem, so I, sometimes I attempt to fix them, but I don't like to. I usually take them to Mike at East County Beat and Tackle, and that guy will take it apart, oh, cool. clean it, get it yeah, good as new. I can't handle that kind of responsibility. Uh, yeah, it's usually what twenty five to forty five bucks for a real service, yeah. and usually a real for me will go about two years without one if I maintain it really well. So I, I find the value in just letting somebody do it because when I do it, I'm probably going to be spending twenty five dollars on parts that I broke trying yeah. to put it back together. So <laughs> or, or that you lost. if I could get those parts, or yeah, yeah. Not, yeah. So the key to it is maintaining it, keeping it clean, keeping it oiled, and then they'll last a really long time. Hopefully, but we're in salt water, so anything could happen. So where was I? Oh yeah. So we're gonna go ahead and go around to the moving parts. We just did the bale. We worked that in there, um, and then there's the shaft, Roman. We're gonna go ahead. This is the second shaft, and that thing right there, you can see it goes up and down. You see that, Roman? Yep. Up and down. So that gets a lot of movement. So the first thing you want to do is clean off all the junk off it. It's got old oil on it. It's got all kinds of junk. We have a question. We have a question from yes. uh, from Roy. Uh, do white sea bass count for the biggest other? Of course. No, no, no oh, actually they don't. What? I'm sorry. It's the three bass calico. Uh, do we want to add white sea bass? Because if somebody catches a white sea bass, it's game over. Yeah. What do you guys think? Oh, if if we do white sea bass, it's only going to be in La Jolla local areas. You can't go out on like a two day boat and get a white sea bass. Oh, that's true. That's what do you true. think? Uh, okay, let, 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 don't you let me talk to let me talk change, to the judge about it. Don't I'm change not the, the rules judge. on the existing I, I, thing. Let's keep the existing thing, which is uh, the biggest other bass. Which Calico, is the three: sand bass or spotted bay bass. Okay, that's it. Yeah. And then maybe if it's uh, maybe we could just do a something for MMFC that's like uh. 
for the Hoyle fishermen. Yeah. Yeah. Well, absolutely. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it mean, out. We, have, we have categories in there for yeah. posting your fish. So you might not win an award, but hey, you can show it off in Discord. We okay, do, where we were do, we? We're we watching that? the shaft we go do. up and down. So there it goes. See that shaft? This part right here <laughs> is, a family, is going this is up a family and family friendly show. <laughs> I know. I told you it's going to get booze go. and butt heady right. in here, man. I can hear everybody giggling. <laughs> so that shaft, uh, clean it off, get all the excess oil, get all that. You want to put on some nice, fresh oil. There's a seal right there that seals around that shaft that that keeps all everything from falling in there, the water-resistant seal. Uh, you want to keep that thing clean. So make sure before you put the oil on, you look down in that and make sure there's not a bunch of gunk around it. Clean that off. I've already done that. And then when you've done that, go ahead and put, I'm going to say, two or three drops. Don't get crazy. Don't sit there and squeeze it out. And then take a brand new, clean, not the dirty end, the clean end of a Q-tip, and then just work that all the way on the shaft, Roman, all the way around it. <laughs> oh, <Awkward>. uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I've been dreading this all night. Zach, I don't know what Zach else to says call fishing it. hour after dark. That's so don't, don't kick in the music. Oh, uh, pork butts. Right. Uh, yeah. Um, when we do get back together, guys, I am gonna cook pork butts for everybody. Well, oh, we'll, right on. I'll probably, oh, I can I can fit like maybe two in my trigger. The two so. or three drops. Go ahead and get the threads at the very top for the spool when you put that thing back on there. And that thing should look nice and shiny, clean. You've got your oil, so let's go ahead and start assembling it back together. Uh, these are some drag washers. I usually don't mess with those. They, uh, I, I don't oil those. If you have those cloth drag washers, which are located inside of the spool, that's another show. Maybe the next time we'll take apart that. I don't have enough time to take the drag washers out. But one hint I will tell you, if you look inside of this, How's that showing up? If you start seeing like a cloth in there or lint or something that doesn't look like it should be in there, the drag washers in most of these reels are made out of like, you, would, you wouldn't believe it. It's like a thin cloth. It's mm. like a piece of felt. Um, oh, yeah. And if, if those things start giving out inside of that, you'll start seeing little pieces of lint and felt in there because they're burning up and they're coming out and they stay in there. They stick to all the oils in there. So if you start seeing that, that's probably a good time to take this apart and replace those felt drag washers in there. So keep an eye in there. And this is an area also that you want to clean out every time. So I'm not going to do that today. We'll do that another time, but I don't have enough time to do that today. So uh, we're going ahead and put on the this piece right here. And that should slide down, just just slide right down onto the shaft. Here we go. And uh, we're going to go ahead and put the spool back on. And when you put that on, you should hear that clicking noise, right? If you don't hear that, something hasn't gone together correctly. That clicking noise, that's what all the spinning reels, we love that sound. When we hear that sound, we know fish on. So <laughs> make sure that's on. Uh, make sure that you clean out this rubber area. I'm going to have to speed it up because it's going to take forever. I'm going to get one more thing after this too. So clean this, clean this out. Use your salt away, spray salt away directly on the rag and go ahead and clean out the top of the spool, all the spool. And then the spool uh, nut that goes on top here, go ahead and clean all that rubber off. These have a rubber seal on them to prevent water from getting down in that drag system. So make sure that is clean. If there's any debris on that, it'll create a spot for water to go into. So clean that out. And this is the hardest part for me. This is the hardest part of the maintenance, this part I'm going to do next. So one of the main things that give out on these spinning reels is, is this portion right here where your line goes through. And it, this, this, this bale has this guide right here. Yeah. Yep. And yep. if you're ever winding and you hear like a, on, not on the cast, only on the retrieve, when you hear that grinding sound, you're thinking, oh, bearing's probably going out. Or when it's under like a heavy load and there's a grinding noise, most of the time it's going to be this bushing or bearing right here. And that take, you imagine the amount of braid and the water and salt yeah. that we pull through this every time. So this sees a lot of salt water. So this, this right here, we're going to take this apart to guy tonight, guys, to show you exactly. And hold on. I got to plug in my phone. It, it's going dead. Cool. 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 How often are you servicing your reels like this? Do you do this every uh, time? 
because I take out like six reels, I just kind of, uh, uh, I would say if you have the patience, do it every time. But I would say I'd probably do it eh, every five times, maybe. Depending on how much use they got. Sometimes when I take out a reel, I don't even use it. You know, it's on there, it's loaded up, but it's, I, I'm not, I, you know, I loaded it up with a bait that I ended up not using. So it depends on how heavy of use it got. If I use it all day, I should probably do it that same day. The wipe down, do every time. But as far as I'm talking about this, uh, the oil hold on. and taking it apart, yep. As far as taking apart and doing everything I'm just doing right now, probably maybe every five times. Sorry. Okay. Back to this. All right, so this right here in some reels is a bushing and some reels is a bearing. In the Nossies, it's a bushing, so it's a little easier to take apart. The bearings don't need quite as much maintenance. Usually if the bearing goes out, it's just replace it. These bearings are usually like seven to 10 bucks. They're not very expensive. So if that bearing starts grinding, it's probably you're gonna take it apart and put in a new bearing. You're not gonna be, there. most of them are sealed. You can't repair those, you're gonna have to replace it. But this one's a bushing, so we can take it apart and clean it. So. I'm going to switch to the other camera, Roman. All right, I'm going to switch to my view. Hey, what's up? Hope you're enjoying the show so far. <laughs> if you are, do me a favor, hit that like button. There's 36 people watching and 32 likes. Let's get that number up. Woo! Uh, Brian's setting up a different perspective for you guys. So once you come back to his screen, I'll have to adjust it, and then we'll get on with the next section of this real maintenance video. Man, this is a good one. All right, so I think it's on the screen. Make sure you have the focus thing going, Brian. Sure. I'm going to start messing with it over here. Close. Full screen. Okay. Guys, I'm, gonna admit, I'm a little nervous taking this apart because I haven't done this for a while. So <laughs> there's a lot of little parts in here. Let's hopefully this goes smooth. It's live, so I'm doing it live. See okay. how it goes. There we go. And now back to Brian and his real maintenance. <laughs> All right. So this portion right here, to take this to take this apart, uh, there's basically there a flathead screw directly right here. In this case, a Phillips screw. Um, if you haven't taken this off in like years, that thing's gonna be hard to get out. Um, that's why this is one of the things I recommend you take apart occasionally just so that when it does seize up or does have a problem, it's not totally locked up with salt. It's not totally uh, corroded shut. This is something that you want to check occasionally. So hopefully this one's not totally seized. I'm gonna change my angle. Perfect, came loose. That's good, that's a good sign. So am I centered, Roman, about right about there? Right there, perfect, yep. Okay, so we're gonna take this screw, we're gonna loosen it all the way up. Are you holding it with your left hand because there's tension on that? Yeah, I'll, I'm just trying to hold it to the camera too. I probably okay, wouldn't good. do it like, I wouldn't hold it like this if I wasn't. Okay. But uh, okay. the main thing you want to do anytime you're dealing with these small parts is work slow. Yeah. Don't start ripping things apart. You want to work in an area like I have a surface where if something does fall out, you can see it. Uh, you can work over a Tupperware bowl, work over something, have a magnet ready because these parts, if you lose them, are going to be hard to get. And usually you have to order like, you can't just okay. order that one washer. Yeah. You've got to order a Fifty dollars worth of parts to get that one piece. So, or pay be like, careful or with pay, it. Hopefully, or, I don't. Or pay five. Drop bucks, a part here. Or pay five bucks for oh. for a fifty cent part for shipping. That's <laughs> that's right. So this is going to come apart now. Hopefully, if you if you haven't maintained this in a long time, <laughs> it may take some pressure. This Kel, thing. Cal said, "This is oh. why." Cal said, "This is why I pay somebody to service my reels." So you guys saw that washer just fell out. Yeah. I'm going to put that. That's the first thing. So what when I take things apart. I put them in the order on the table. I know Salty Dangler does this too, because I've seen his pictures. I put them in order of what they came out. So that way, when I go to put it back together, it's just the order they came out. So there's a little plastic bushing. What, trick, what gets me on that one is like, sometimes those parts have to be put in a certain way. Like, oh yeah. One, so another, one side has to be a certain way. So I usually do the, I usually do the right side on the bottom. So I use, I use whatever's whatever's facing the the sorry whatever's facing the left side, I put that part touching the bot touching the table. So when I pick as it up, I put it on the same the same direction. Does that make sense? As long as you can remember how it came apart. Yeah. I mean, don't just take things apart and dump stuff out because it's going to take you two days to figure out how to get it back all together. Because these things are like precision parts. If they don't go back together, they're going to bind. 
Okay, so we've got that totally apart and it is filthy. I can see in it already. So I take my Q-tip and first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and clear all that gunk out of there. I mean, it. I don't know if you can see that, but it is, it is disgustingly filthy in there. So we've got that portion of it cleaned out. There's no parts in there, so I don't have to worry about anything falling out right now. I'm gonna flip it over and we're gonna clean the other side and it is filthy too. Oh, that's crazy. I haven't so done that. It, How do you do that? Dang. So it is totally full of corrosion. It's totally full of debris. And that eventually will seize up. And you'll either that thing's not going to rotate any longer, which will take away some of your sensitivity, or that thing's going to just sound like a coffee grinder. So now we've got those two portions of the reel cleaned up. <laughs> We're going to go down the row and clean up each one of these. And like I said, it's better to do this with like a, a, a foam. I'm going to actually get a new Q-tip. Dude, that one's getting dirty. Sound in the it's city. Sound in the city. What do you mean by Amazon Prime has entered the chat? Please explain. <laughs> oh, well, we can't do Amazon. Probably talking about ordering parts. Oh, probably, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, oh, yeah, yeah. Amazon Prime because you do have to pay for shipping. Makes sense. So got it, got I'm it. I'm going to go ahead and start wiping all these little tiny parts down just to save time. I'm not going to totally wipe them all just because, but mm -hmm. I would go through each one and clean them all out. This one actually has a little plastic bushing in there. So I'm going to take that out too. A BDG says, uh, take pictures as you disassemble. Absolutely. Yep. Especially if you're disassembling an entire reel, have your schematic, have pictures, have every piece of ammo you can get. So I'm going to clean these totally out. Like I said, use a foam if you got them. Much better. You don't have to worry about that cotton going on there. These things, I don't know if the camera's showing it, Roman, but they are really filthy. Yeah, that's showing it. I, I'm definitely embarrassed because it shows I've really been procrastinating when cleaning this thing how dare you oh, now see that's what you don't want you see that how that lint got on there yep you got to really keep an eye to make sure see that would have screwed up everything see, so see, you got to keep see, an see, eye see, uh, bring that back up to the camera see how that one has, already... see how that one has a little lip on one side yeah it only goes in one direction all right good okay good that's the kind of stuff that, that freaks me out yeah me too so hopefully the, if it doesn't go back good and you got to figure it out. So hopefully this goes back good. Okay, just imagine I've cleaned all those pieces. They're sparkling clean. We're going to go ahead and take that. Where did I put my oil? We're going to take and we're going to put one drop of oil onto a clean end of your Q-tip. So we're going to go ahead, maybe a couple of drops. See that, that nice, uh, kind of just soaks in there. And then you're going to go ahead and you're going to put a thin coat on all these parts. I'm going to just do this real quick, Roman. Yeah, no worries. And we're going to get a nice thin coat of oil. <laughs> Leonard's, hit, Leonard's hit a TV with a spring before. Oh, uh, I just said, uh, not much different from servicing a firearm. Springs go flying everywhere. And Leonard yeah. said, I hit my TV with a spring before. <laughs> I've been thinking about doing this all day, and I'm like, oh, my gosh. Am I going to ruin my reel or lose all my parts right here on live? <laughs> You know, so so far it's going pretty good. I haven't dropped anything. And boom, I'm only halfway there. Okay. And boom, the, the, yeah, exactly. the, the table falls and over. And boom, Dink comes in and oh. screws up everything. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and start to reassemble. Wow. I'm gonna go ahead and start with this piece right here. It can yep. only go in one way. Yep. If I try to put it in the other way, doesn't quite go in right. So that piece is gone. It's gone in, and you want to make sure that that thing is operating nice and smooth. And I'm going to go ahead, since that is the metal on metal part right there, that's the actual metal bushing part, I'm going to put a drop of that oil in there. One drop. Okay, now we've got the little line guide, this little brass piece. And this piece goes directly into that. So I've got that piece on there. These two pieces connect. I'm going to go ahead and put a drop of oil in that before I put it back together. <laughs> Darius said, I took one of mine apart last week, and it took me three days to put it back together. No joke. The the parts, oh, yeah. the parts diagram for it was terrible. Oh, yeah. man. A buddy broke a Your window wrist? with a recall spring ones. Oh, dang. So feel this thing. This thing should be smooth as butter. It should be totally smooth, like your line's going through it. That thing is so much smoother, Roman, than when I started. I, I, I don't know how to tell you. It, it's super smooth. So we've got that going. Now the last thing on this end is that little washer I took off. So that is going on. And then we've only got two parts left. We've got this washer, which goes on the inside 
of right here and I've got this flipped over and then we've got the screw. I'm going to try to put that screw in there. Oop, washer came out. And now this is the hardest part. I'm going to try to line all that up, which somehow miracle I did it first time. First and then time, uh, I'm going to make sure you don't, just tight, sure you tighten don't the cross screw. thread that thing. Oh, wait, I forgot an important step. So before, yeah, make sure you don't cross thread it, but also put a dab of oil on those threads. That way it's not totally frozen up next time you take it apart. So take that apart. Did you see dab? I did. All right, I just dabbed for you. I did. So I like to tighten this really tight and then back it off a tiny bit. So, I mean, it's a tiny little machine screw, so you're not gonna get your Hulk Hogan arm out and crank that sucker down, because it'll probably bind that up. So I like it just a little you mean tight, this one? a little bit off. <laughs> yeah, that one. <laughs> That's it. That is exactly it. And, okay, successfully, ooh, that has been a lot of pressure all day. Let's go back to their camera. Okay, like, like successfully, that piece is put back together. Like when you're, like when you're a kid? Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> Putting on the gun show. All right, I'm gonna go so, switch back to the other camera. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll keep him entertained while you do that. That's hilarious. Please do. So funny. Oh, first time, huh? What up, Cal? Welcome to the show. First timer, Cal. Round of applause. <laughs> Woo! Welcome to the show, Cal. <laughs> oh, very cool. Uh, any questions on what you just witnessed? I mean, besides my muscles. I mean, I'll talk about the real. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> All right, uh, uh, turn your camera back on, Brian. There it is. There you go. Right. Oh, no. Oh, oh, hold on a Brian's second. We knew dark. this was going to happen. Brian's Give me one second. Dark. All right, cool. Uh, also, guys, a quick announcement. A couple days ago, like three days ago, um, I was playing Warzone duos with, with Salty, <laughs> and we also got a dub. So Ooh. if you guys want to go watch that, if you're interested in that kind of stuff, link in the chat. Woo! Go salty, go salty. <laughs> uh, if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, I'm talking about Warzone. I play a video game called uh, it's Call of Duty, uh, Call of Duty Warzone. I started playing it this year. It's pretty fun. If you guys play that game and you want to jump in with us, I usually stream that on Twitch. It's my Twitch channel, romancastercom forward slash Twitch. Uh, I don't care if you're new at it or expert. Uh, we just jump in there and have fun. So you're welcome to participate if you're familiar with the game or if you want to learn the game. You have a setup for it. You can do Xbox. You can do PlayStation. You can do PC. It's cross-platform, so no matter what platform you're on, it works. You can all we can all play it on the same team, uh, and it's like uh, one. It's like solos, duos, trios, or quads. So, if you're interested, let me know. There's a whole forum on it in our MMFC Discord server. Okay, look for gaming. All right, back to. Sorry guys, this is the risk we take by switching cameras. I gotta redo all my camera settings real quick. I'm just gonna oh, turn up the turn it up so you can see me. It's not gonna be as okay. awesome as it was before. So oh. hold on one second. Hello. How's that? That good? That's good. Just uh, uh, turn your uh, what is it called? The, the bottom one. Gain. Gain all the way down to like I think you had like two. Man, that's where it was. 100. 80. Yeah. Oh, oh okay. Go. Leave it where it was and change your uh, expo exposure. To, yeah, I did. To six? Let's just finish. Let's finish this baby out. Okay. How's it look? Can you see me? Yeah, I can see you. I I prefer it blurry. <laughs> as blurry as possible. I need I need all kinds of filters and stuff. So I wish I had something like that. Oh, I just fixed it. Bam. 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 Right. Bam. Okay. Questions? Oh, question. Oh, are we? How am often, I back on? How often do you do? How often do you do a deep clean like this? I usually just missed it off after each trip yeah so same with me i just kind of missed it off with the salt away wipe it down take the spool off kind of clean it off put a couple drops of grease that's my oh that's my general maintenance <laughs> i do on these i would say i do that the wipe down every time i try to unless i got no time i try to wipe it down every time but every i do that deep cleaning i just did i would say if you use that real lot maybe every fifth outing really take it apart <laughs> but really if you if you don't keep up on it, you're gonna it's gonna make you do it. You're gonna hear grinding. Yeah. It's not gonna feel. It's not gonna look like this. It's not gonna be super smooth. It's uh, not gonna feel like new. So it's gonna make you do it. That's so funny. Uh, Eric said I had no idea you played that game. And then uh, Zach said my six year old <laughs> daughter named her bicep Chunky 
and rock. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. So it's a miracle, guys. It went back together smoothly. Everything went good. And that is my uh, real maintenance procedure. Uh, don't forget to oil up. All, uh, every reel is a little different. This is a Shimano Nazi. Uh, next time, we'll go over replacing those drag washers, which about every season, they, especially the cloth ones, they need to be replaced. Or when you look down in there and see them you disintegrate. You see what, what it looks like to, to, when it needs to be replaced and then what a new yeah. one looks like. That'd be kind of good. That'd be good. And you want to keep track of those drag washers because if you get that big fish on there and that thing's jerking and oh, yeah. drag's not right, you could lose that that world record. So keep up on your maintenance, guys. Very All cool. right, what time is it, Roman? Eight thirty. So we probably, uh, we probably don't have time to go over anything else in the show. So that was a good show. I, hey, I enjoy doing that. I'm so happy that it went together the way smoothly. I was very nervous. I have to admit, doing a live breakdown of that that uh, bail pushing. Out. Yeah, it worked out. So worked I'm out. happy I think, that I think, we're back together. I think we've successfully scared everybody into just taking the reel to get service by a professional. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, besides the last thing I did with that, that reel, that, that bushing, everything else was really easy. It was just a matter of wiping it down, cleaning it, looking at it, inspecting it, working oil into it, cleaning the excess oil. Just don't get ridiculous yeah. with the oils, guys. Okay, That's, next week we're doing we're doing baitcaster. Can yeah, you, we can, can do baitcaster next week. Yeah, baitcaster, sure. Yeah, we'll do baitcaster maybe not week. next week's spotty bowl. So maybe, maybe, maybe baitcaster. Yeah, they'll, they'll, be, they'll be okay with not knowing the results until next week. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. I'm sure. <laughs> no, nobody ever wants to know the results of spotty bowl right away. All right, so now is a portion for open discussion. If you guys have any specific questions about what we did tonight or anything about spotty bowl or the bay, if you guys don't have any questions, then we're probably going to wrap this baby up. Roman's got to get to his pork butt. Oh yeah, uh, my 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 son walked in here like like ten minutes ago while I was off the camera, and he said, "Hey, did you forget about the pork butt?" And I was like, "No, no, we still got an hour." He was like, "Oh, okay." They're like, they're waiting. <laughs> How long for does it, it take to cook one of those? About Just ten curious. hours. Ten hours. Yeah. Ooh, that's an all dayer. Oh, for sure. But it's nice. And you cook it in the. How's it turn out if you do it in the microwave? <laughs> Terrible, because <laughs> you render all the fat, so all the fat is like, all the all the fat in it kind of like blends into the meat, and it's like. Super tender and delicious. Yeah. Uh, mm. I, dude, there's nothing better than like that pulled pork, anything. Yeah. Pulled pork sandwich, pulled the tacos. So, so like now I, I now have the base for like we'll be eating for the next three or four days. So like I want to make uh, keto tortillas. I'll make, I'll make pulled pork tacos. Uh, put it on top of a, like a baby spinach as like a salad. Wow. And, and then I'll probably make a, a bigger tortillas and make burritos with that. So, oh, it sounds so good. So it sounds, and what do you put in that burrito? Uh, Just any cheese, guac, cheese, anything like that? Sour cream. Uh, sour cream? Top, top, top of two for cheese, dip in. Guac and uh, um, sour cream. Probably, yeah. yeah. Oh, man, that sounds good. Mm. I'd, I'd have some top two, though. I got to have top two with my burrito. Oh, very nice. All right, so open discussion, Roman. My chat is not really working that well, so yeah, is there I, any questions think, before we wrap it up? I think we filled in most of the questions as we're going through, so I think we're good. Uh, okay, well, I'm going to address two questions really quick from okay. your favorite singing guy. What's his name? Sound in the city. Uh, I put a – there's a Anthony, right? on, Is it Anthony? I think it's Anthony? Anthony, yes. Anthony Sound in the City put in a few questions right. in the Fishy sure. Hour questions. And I want to make sure I address anybody like that it. puts those questions in Discord for Fishy Hour. He says, what size hook and weight do you use for drop shot in the bay, Roman? I'll let you, I'll let you hit that first. Oh, uh, one ounce. It's just, I like, like Dario uh, explained the other day. I like just casting it out there and know it's going to get right to the bottom because that's the whole point of a drop shot, right? The drop shot is not going to be you're not trying to fish a mid-column. You're trying to get to the bottom, dangle it in their face, and move along if they don't bite it. So uh, I want that, That's when you're vertically fishing your drop shot, right? Yep. yep. Even when I'm even when I'm drifting, dude. If I'm drifting, well, he's, if I'm ever drifting, he is. Uh, let's remember though, he's he's fishing from shore. It's even remember, better, right? From, it's even better from shore because he's gonna be able to cast like a monster cast, dude. He's gonna cast it for like the biggest cast you ever casted. If you only, that's right. If you just started fishing, it's gonna go super far. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna Cast it, point the rod at your at your lure, uh, like at like at this angle, and then take up the slack on the line. Stop reeling, stop reeling. Lift up the rod tip, and as you do that, you're dragging the lure towards you, right? Stop lifting the rod, and on your way back down, reel up the slack. 
But while you're while you're bringing the rod back down and reeling up the slack, you shouldn't be you shouldn't be uh, turning it fast enough that you're pulling in more line, uh, that you're moving the bait. So the whole time you're bringing the rod back down, your bait is sitting still. Okay, well not sitting still. Your lure your your weight is still on the bottom, but your but your lure is suspended, but in the same spot. It's gonna be wiggling around because you have a little bit of motion. And then you do it again. Repeat. Uh, stop reeling. Lift up the rod tip. Start reeling to take up the slack as you bring it down. Stop reeling and do it again. And they'll be dragging it towards you each, each time. And each time you, 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 uh, you wind down, your, your bait is kind of paused. And then you'll probably get a bite as you start lifting it up again. So that's kind of what I do. And hey, I'm sure it's, super, it's killer, dude. I'm sure. He's got, Roman's got a lot more shore experience for me. But are you watching that, that, that weight to make sure it's heavy enough to where it's not like he hits the bottom and it's just drifting over to the side, right? I'm assuming you want that thing to hit the bottom and kind yep. of stick where you want it to stay. Exactly. That's probably one of the, so depending on the current, if it's slack tide, you might get away with something lighter, maybe a half ounce, but if that tide's ripping one ounce, two ounce, whatever it takes to stick to that bottom would be mine. And they make these type of drop shot weights or like a little torpedo and they're breakaway. So if it does get snagged on something, you don't lose your whole rig. You don't lose your leader. Whatever you're fishing, it usually just breaks this weight off. So, And if you're a coach, you go out to the fire ring and you find yourself a big old 16-penny nail. You tie that baby on there, and that's the best drop shot weight in the world. Right, coach? Yep. That's true. It's, it's right. actually better for the environment because it, it'll rust away. Yeah, so if, if coach's advice, I'm going to give it for you, coach. Go to the, go to the pit. Find yourself a 16-penny nail. Use that. Very cool. Uh, size of hook, it depends on what I'm, if I'm fishing with a fluke, I'll usually use like a weedless hook, offset hook, uh, number two, number one. Uh, that's probably the most common size. It depends on what bait you're using, Anthony. If you're using a, a, a small little tiny finesse bait, match it up with the size of hook you're using. Very cool. So, All right. He's, he's satisfied with the answer. He gave us an okay. Very cool. Perfect. And his last question was, do you fish the A rig from shore? Uh, me, I would think that's super dangerous because if you cast that thing out and get snagged with me, I have to reposition myself in all kinds of directions to get off the bottom, and that yeah. baby's expensive. Yeah, it's usually the opposite way of the, that you are reeling, where you have to position your kayak or whatever. So if you're from shore, yeah, you can you kind of really have to fish it kind of like at an angle and hope that, that you can get a different angle if you yeah. get stuck. So I, w- it's not, I would say be very selective yeah. on where you throw an A rig from shore. Yeah, you know, maybe if you can find some clean, sandy, grassy no structure kind of stuff, or you're really good with popping that thing out of the rocks or popping yep. it up before it hits the rocks. That, that, that It's an expensive lure to be thrown in yeah. at, uh, in riprap, I guess maybe I'd I w- say. I would do like a, I would try like a, maybe a three armed day rig with uh, ball jigs. Yeah. Like cheap, like a super cheap setup. If you're going to do from shore, just so you yep. get an idea of how easy it is to get stuck. And, or if, if you can get to a dock, you can get to a dock. You can definitely fish an yeah. A rig from a dock and yeah. cast out in open water. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. All right, Roman, I'm glad we answered those questions. So now we're going to move on. If you don't watch a show, I always give out a movie review. This is the end of the show. This is what I like to do. Me and Roman like to watch movies. You've heard this before. Uh, my movies tonight. Oh, man, I got to switch my background. Do I, do I really need to keep switching this background, Roman? I guess you got to. No, you're not, dude. I guess you got to keep with traditions, though, right? Keep to. traditions going. Keep, keep go. traditions strong. <laughs> I, usually, uh, I usually review 80s and 90s movies, guys, but... To be honest with you, I'm running out, so I'm going into the early 2000s right now. And uh, you know what, Roman? I've been watching more and more Netflix movies okay. and HBO Plus. Did you? I just watched Godzilla vs. King Kong. Oh, is that good? <laughs> Watch it. I mean, if you like Godzilla, you like King Kong. But it's, I mean, the fight scenes are incredible. But yeah, it's true. exactly what you'd expect it to be. Uh, I mean, if you have HBO Plus, why not? Yeah, um, exactly. It's a brand new movie. Yep. So my first movie, uh, this movie came out in 2002. It stars Tom Hanks. And so, it's a classic. There's a lot of one-liners that come out of this. It's about a guy that works for FedEx, and he's in a wreck, oh, yeah. and he ends up getting stranded on a desert island. And it's fun to watch him how to learn how to survive on this island. He ends up making a friend. I'm not going to say who that friend is in case you haven't seen this movie. I'm sure you have. But he ends up yelling out his name. And anytime anybody sees this object... You can go ahead and yell the name out, Roman, if you want. That's funny. That's hilarious. You'd yell out this name. Oh, Wilson! <laughs> I don't think I've ever been to like a, a volleyball event or whatever. 
when somebody out the on that thing or if you see it I, for some reason i've always seen like a ball floating in the bays i think kids on shore lose yeah. them and that's the first thing i think is wilson uh, come over here yeah it's like wilson i'm sorry come back so i like this movie i always like things that have fishing in it or out in the ocean or survival i like those kind of movies this is cast away with tom hanks classic movie that's a good movie yeah, I, I I really like this movie. Um, I'm giving this four out of five Ooh, max. Nice. It's, it's it's way up there. It came it's way out up there. In 2001, you said. 2002. 2002. So like. I don't. Know. So like way Long after time. your background. I yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm I'm running out of 80s movies. I'll, I gotta, I, what I gotta do is I gotta go hit the swap meet and buy up a bunch more. So. Oh nice. <laughs> Pass away, a great movie. Haven't seen it. Definitely check that one out. I'm pretty sure that's on Netflix or HBO Plus or one of those services. The next movie, uh, it took me kind of by surprise. I didn't think it was gonna be a comedy. I see it came out and. I see a good comment by Demented. What's up, Demented? Welcome to the stream. Uh, I think I don't recognize the name, so welcome if it's your first time here. He says I always have fun fishing the dolphin half day. And Wilson, the deckhand, is working. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> yeah. That guy probably regrets when that movie come out. He's probably been hearing that for I'll get bit, like, 20 Wilson, years now. Wilson, I need a bait. <laughs> Wilson, I'm bit. Get my face, Gaff. Wilson, Gaff. That's funny. Wilson. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure he's never heard that. Dirty yellow tail today Are, on the San Diego. Damn. What? Where at? They must have been out of the islands. Yeah. Not in San Diego. Really? Wow. It's I can't wait to get back out to La Jolla, to be honest with you, Roman. Once the yeah. water calms down. Every time I, I tried to go out there on Sunday and it was so yeah. choppy and so rough, I just turned went around and went right back in the bay. It was, yeah. I, I don't go out unless it's calm, guys, to be honest with you. Unless it's nice and comfortable. I don't like being out there and get beat up. So next movie came out. I'm getting into the modern day movies here. 2009, this movie kind of took me by surprise. I, I expected it to be something that it wasn't. It turned out to be of comedy. I've watched this several times. It's got two parts to it. I don't know if you've seen this one. It's not obscure. It's kind of mainstream, but Zombieland. Star Wars. Wood, oh, Woody yeah. That's a, that's a fun movie. It's yeah. it's it's kind of like, almost like, you know, how the Marvel movies are really fun. Yeah. They've got, it's like a serious subject, I guess, zombies, but they turn it into humor. Yeah. And, like and I think they hit a home that. run with this, yeah. turning a, a zombie movie into a comedy. It's got some classic scenes. Part two, to me, is just as good as part one. Zombieland, I really like it. Four think, out of five max. Go check that out. Oh, I think I've seen part two actually. I need yeah, to go part, make if sure. you like part one, watch rewatch you know part one to get familiar with it, and then go out and see part two. It's really good. You know what movie I thought was so was like so good when I first watched it? Um, uh, let me guess. No, no, I'm I'm I'm, 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 I'm oh. gonna do a different one. I'm gonna do a different one. Uh, what? You have two movies that you like? Yeah, and one other movie that I thought was like I, I like the post apocalyptic uh, post apocalyptic style movies too, like the just like what would happen if uh, a, a a pandemic broke out and yeah. everybody turned into like zombies. Like uh, yep. the, the first I movie like that, those movies too. The first movie that the apocalypse I, movies. Yeah, the first movie that I watched that was like that style that that I really enjoyed. Besides like uh, besides like the old uh, horror movies that are like zombie coming back back from the dead or whatever, Living Dead. Was because uh, those are slow zomb- slow zombies. I like the this movie's called uh, Twenty Four Hours Later. That was like the never first seen th- it. Oh my god, <laughs> dude! Let me write, let me write it down. Twenty Four hours, hours Later. later. Hours. Oh, I'm not gonna talk about it anymore. What is it? An eighties movie? Uh maybe two thousand. Two thousand? Okay, yeah, I'll check that it, out. It's done very I'll well. It. It's done very well. I'll try. I'll try, I'll try to uh, watch it before next Wednesday. Oh, I'll give you the, a, a review. All right, it's so good. It's so good. Yeah. Uh, I'm glad I, yeah, uh, all right. Something to talk about. Anyway, so Zombieland, check it out. I yeah, like 28 it. days okay. later. 28 days later. Sorry, 28 days later. 28 days, days later. later. Yeah. 28 days. Thanks, Hyder. Later. That movie's so crazy. Oh, I can't wait to see it. Yeah, I like that. I like that genre of apocalypse. Oh, okay. Too. So you're gonna love it. World War Z, all those type of. Yeah, so, so, I love the Resident Evil series. I think I that, that. I think that 28 Days Later is, is the one that inspired most of the series of most most of the movies after that. That were coming out, like uh, I think that inspired like the whole post-apocalyptic zombie thing, like like World War Z, um, Resident Evil. Resident Evil. Uh, I'm not sure if Resident Evil or not, but anyway, it's it's a really good movie. It's really well done, and uh, along that same line, there's a uh, Children of Man. You seen that one? No. Oh, it's a good one too. Oh, see, you need to start giving me some movie recommendations. Uh, Maybe we'll switch it up a little bit so then, I can. Uh, I can... There's a couple other ones. Anyway, so yeah, anyway, that's good. That's good. That's good. Wait, yeah. do those movies have Jean-Claude Van Damme in them? No. 
Oh my gosh! Right? It's weird, right? Without him, what in the world? What's going on here? And then if you really, truly an apocalypse. And then if you want to get your spirits back up and like, and like uh, really watch a movie that inspires you and motivates you to to train, the training montage, and yeah. to and to here it comes. and to get better, and to better yourself by mm-hmm. by hard work, per, uh, persistence, and motivation. Go watch Bloodsport, <laughs> Cake Boxer. <laughs> Maybe not Universal Soldier, but still a good movie because that's like science, science right, stuff that right. in there. But but other than that, <laughs> anyway. Bloodsport all the way. I love all the training montages. Those are the best. Yeah, they are. Because yeah, you can definitely see the improvement there. What's the one where he kicks the palm tree in half? Oh, uh, that's a kickboxer. Oh, I just look yeah. at a palm tree and my shin hurts thinking about it. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I hate that part. I hate that part. He gets that's all angry so and he kicks good. the palm tree over. Yeah. Like, ah. Hurts me just he's watching like, it. Shake the palm tree. He's like, like this, like this. He just starts whacking it. Yeah. Oh, uh, don't even mention it anymore. All right. We're gonna oh, wrap. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, so you're you're gonna review 28 days later for me. Tell me what, what you think. How many how many yeah, Ma- Mad Max can, will you get? As long as I can find it on one of the streaming services, okay. I'll watch it. All right, cool. All right. Hopefully, it, okay, hopefully, yeah. hopefully it's on there. there. All right, guys. So guess what? This weekend, what do we got going on, Roman? Spotty Bowl. So you know what we do at Spotty Bowl, right? It's time oh, to party. Shit. Let's get this thing rolling. It's Spotty Bowl. Shotgun. Ooh. It's Spotty Bowl. I'm going to party. I'm going to get out there. I'm going to snack some grass. I'm going to catch some bass. I'll see you guys in the water. I'll probably be there Saturday. Later, Roman. Woo! Thanks so much, Brian, for the awesome show today. Hope you guys enjoyed the show this evening. Ryan again. One more time, guys. Round of applause from the live studio audience. Woo! Thanks again, Brian, for all the work you do and for making this show possible. Eric, you too. Thank you for handling the spotty bowl and making that possible. And everybody else here in chat, welcome. From everybody that's been here since the beginning, a year ago, to everybody that's been here, to, to even if it's your first time here, welcome. We've been doing this for about a year. Hang out, be positive share your knowledge and you will be rewarded with friendship fishing knowledge and just like an amazing group of guys that you can fish with um, of course we don't all 100% mesh and get along sometimes but for the most part we're all adults with mutual respect for each other we stay away from conversations that might might make us butt heads so that we can continue to enjoy fishing as a unifying form or unifying topic okay so that's what we do here hope you guys enjoyed fishy hour i know it's fishy two hours <laughs> but we'll be back here on monday for uh fishing reports with coach worth and, I'll, and I'll, i'm gonna try to see if i get captain scotty to jump on again on this uh coming monday that happens on this very channel uh monday 7 p.m pacific center time tuesdays will be on twitch more likely than not in this very chair Unless the weather gets nicer and I can get out early from work and I can go jump on the kayak before the show starts and I can stream my live fishing sessions from the kayak. That also might happen at 7 p.m. Pacific Center time if I get out earlier. Maybe um, a group virtual hugs is Cal. Yay! <laughs> and then uh, back here again on Wednesday for bay fishing with Roman and Brian. All right, guys. I've been to the show. Thanks again. I'll see you guys Monday if I don't see you on Twitch playing Warzone with the boys. Later. All right. Cool.